The following is a brief but I think important preamble. It's reasonable to ask why make these changes? Why bother taking all the time and thought to come up with these ideas or see other people do them and want to try them myself? Uh, and I have to confess that these systems are never going to be perfect and I don't think really that is what's motivating me uh, to make these changes in the first place. I think for me I am curious. I think about these things a lot. I think about how I would approach implementing a different one modification or another and I think about how is that going to impact the sound? And how does that change my overall architecture of understanding what creates good sound, what things can impact the sound negatively? In the case of a horn speaker, for example, versus another kind of loudspeaker, what are the inherent advantages of horns? What are the inherent disadvantages of horns? What are the colorations of horns? And can those colorations be ameliorated? In this case, that's the purpose of this modification, to try to drastically reduce the negative sonic impact of these, the horn in the horn speaker. So, I hope you enjoy the mod and seeing how I did it and at the end of the video I'll talk about the sonic changes that I heard. Now before I do anything I want to show you something. If I take this mid-range horn and tap it here, you hear what that sounds like? Now, when I put it down so the edge is in contact with the table, it's a lot less resonant. So, but there's still, if I tap this and put my finger here, I can feel that. When I put my finger up here, I can't feel it. So that suggests that this area here is moving in and out and because it's in a horn and essentially the signal is being amplified it wouldn't take much vibration up here to make something that was audible. I ordered some of this material which is widely used for um, damping things like this. It's made more for automobile damping than speakers, but this is called a Dynamat Extreme. And what it is, it's a black rubbery, I assume viscoelastic material with a thin aluminum uh, skin. This is a piece of the material and you can hear it's pretty dead sounding, which is good. Uh, I taped the template I made onto the Dynamat. This material cuts very easily. I like to first make a manageable size piece that I can work with. Then I can just cut along my template. Now I've used this template to cut the four football shape pieces. But first I want to wipe the plastic down with this denatured alcohol. So what I'm doing here, I just press my finger on the paper and it leaves a mark. Cut away this middle part. Doesn't have to be perfect, really. Well, 
that's the shape on one side. We can do the same thing for these ridges here. If I go like that, okay. I'm going to show you how I put a strip of this dynamat on. And we peel off the backing. And it's very sticky, so once you put it down, it's not going to be easy to reposition. What I do for this piece, for example, is give it a little bend so it only makes contact in the middle and get this notch up here at the top first. Try to center it in those ribs like that. Now it's basically in position. So I can uh, I can press this in the center to get good adhesion. And then I use my thumbnail to make good contact there against that raised rib. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. Maybe you can see I'm really pressing it in there. Like that. Now that's very well adhered in that bay. Okay, now I've got this Dynamat Extreme on the entire horn and it's pretty dead sounding. This is the tweeter with the Dynamat uh, covering the whole horn. So I've made the change and I've listened for several hours to the system and I want to talk about the changes I hear now. First of all I want to say that I know there are skeptics out there but having treated the mid-range and tweeter horns on both speakers and listened there is absolutely no doubt that this change significantly impacted the sound of these loudspeakers. The biggest change is how much sweeter the sound became, how much smoother but simultaneously uh, more revealing and detailed and inner layers and textures the sound became. But in a way, in a non-arresting way, it's just, it's all there, but, but it's not in your face. Another thing I heard was the, it relates to imaging, but I'm going to, I'm going to word it differently. I'm going to use the words imaging slash presence that I'm hearing. So, of course, I used to get an image before I treated the speakers. The speakers imaged pretty well, I'd say. And, but what I realized after the change was made is how much mental, how much less mental processing it took to perceive the image. Now, let me give you an example. Suppose you're in a room and you've got your eyes closed and various people walk into the room and they're talking to each other well you would know who's if they're people you know you would know who came into the room who's speaking who's speaking to which other people maybe you can easily tell which way the people are facing and things like that you don't have to think about it it just it's obvious another thing is dynamics. Uh, it just sounds punchier and more lively at the lower registers, but also more uh, cleaner and more dynamic in the mid-range and treble in terms of just sounding more natural. Things, noises come and go, I'll call them noises, come and go, 
without with less fanfare, it was quicker decay afterwards. It, it sounds all very technical. It's just a much. It goes along with the sweetness. It's just a much more natural sound. And the last thing I want to say is the bass became much more prominent. I'm, I'm much more aware of the bass and I'm aware of problems in the bass that I wasn't noticing before. And I'll give it as a, an example. If you're driving down the highway in a car and the car has, well, let's say one of the windows is down and it's making a loud fluttering noise, very loud, and that's all you notice. And you ask the person in the back seat, would you please close the window because I'm getting a very loud fluttering sound. And they close the window. And then suddenly you notice that small leak in the exhaust you've been meaning to get repaired. And then you go to the repair shop and you get that fixed and you go back out on the highway and now you're noticing the drone of the tires on the pavement. You haven't taken your snow tires off and they're making a lot of tire noise. Then you go to the tire store and you get your summer tires put on. And then you notice the wind noise, this little whistling noise going over the windshield. So this happens in audio. As you improve and eliminate the biggest elephant in the room, then you become aware of, of the next things down the road. And it is an endless cycle, and at some point you just have to call good enough uh, alone, leave it alone, unless you, unless you don't want to. And there's nothing wrong with either approach. So I think it's just kind of fun, and when it's not fun, just enjoy the stereo the way it is. So thanks for watching. I hope you found this interesting.